Hello and welcome everyone to this tutorial about creating a padded bomber jacket. First we will import the DXF pattern, then we will arrange it around the avatar and sew it together and then start the simulation. After this we can apply the padded effect to create a more realistic visualization. First, I will go to the library and locate the folder where my pattern is. After I see it, I can either double click or drag and drop it into the 2D window. After I double click on my pattern, the import DXF dialog appears. I will check my options, swap cutting line and sewing line, include notches and auto distribute and confirm with OK. Now once the pattern is loaded, you will see that we also will need an avatar. Once again, I will go to my library, navigate to female version 2, that's the type of avatar I would like to use, double click on the desired avatar and load it into the scene. So let's start by arranging the pattern pieces in the 2D window. First, I make sure that no pattern pieces are overlapping. Uh, I have an image of the avatar shadow and now I move what I think is the front panel to the center front of the avatar or the gray line that goes through the avatar. And then I line up the back panel. In this case, it is absolutely okay to have them next to each other as you want to have this padded line match up. And then I see there's a cutout. I arrange this hem part directly below. Afterwards, I find the sleeve. I place it below the pattern pieces. Then I place the cuff close to the sleeve hem that I have a small sewing distance later on. I put the collar pattern piece on top of my back pattern piece and place the pocket with the pocket flap uh, closely to the also above the patterns. Once everything is arranged we would be ready to do the next step. It is just important that you always remember to arrange the patterns in 2D first. You do it for one half because then you can make use of the symmetry. You will notice that the collar part is not a symmetrical pattern piece. It is currently in one piece. And in order to access the symmetry, we would like to cut this piece in half. And in order to do so, we locate the baseline at the center back. And we will need to use the trace tool in order to cut at this line and make use of the symmetry. Now, when you go to your toolbar, select the trace tool, shortcut I, Click on the baseline in the center back, right click and choose the cut command to split the piece at this location. Now as a next step with the transform pattern tool, you can select one half of the collar and de press delete on your keyboard to erase it from your scene. Let's now move over to arranging the patterns in the 3D window. So right now you can see that the patterns are not organized in the 3D window. And in order to organize them, you can make use of the reset 2D arrangement all button on top of your 3D window. Once you click on this icon, it will copy the exact same arrangement of your pattern pieces from the 2D window to the 3D window. As a next step, to enlarge your screen, it would be a good idea to close the library, simply by clicking on the error icon on the top left. And you should also notice that the baselines are currently not displayed on your pattern pieces in 3D. And in order to show them, you can move to the vertical toggle menu 
the second icon from the top it will up open a menu where you find the command show internal lines and show baselines check both icons and the lines will be visible this will help you to not confuse front and back piece uh, and the second part is that you can switch to textured surface which will display the surface of the front in white and the back in gray to help you separate the front and the side. Now as a next step I will move all my pattern pieces to the side. I press Ctrl and A to select them and with the gizmo move them to the side. I recommend this to make sure that the pattern pieces are not blocking the arrangement points. As a next step we go to the avatar tab and show the arrangement points. Once you have shown the arrangement points, you can now select the front pattern piece and place it around waist height on the front of the avatar. You can see we have this placket in the front where they overlap, so we will need to adjust the position of the pattern piece a bit more. And for this, we can go to the property editor. There you will find a tab with uh, arrangement and with on the X position, we can now adjust the pattern piece so that it nicely overlaps at the center front. When you press 8 on your keyboard, you can switch to the back view and place the pattern piece uh, on the back. Uh, it's the same situation as before. Move the slider on the X position to arrange the pattern pieces uh, a bit more precisely. Now for the hem part, we can choose the point on the outer thigh. And at the moment the pattern piece is still a bit interfering with the leg of the avatar. So it is possible to also change the offset and make the curve a bit bigger so that there's no interference between the two. So now as a next step, we can use the collar pattern piece, place it at the side of the neck. And once again, it's a bit cutting into the skin of the avatar. So we can use the Y position to move it slightly upwards. And right now we only have the pockets and the sleeve left. Uh, and the pockets, I will attach them later on, after the shell is um, sewn together. So for the moment, my goal is to uh, pre prevent them from falling to the floor when I start the simulation. So after right-clicking onto your pattern pieces, you can either freeze them or deactivate them. When you freeze them, they have collision and they remain in place. When you deactivate them, they will not be calculated when the simulation is running so it makes it faster. In this case let's choose the deactivate option. Once you deactivate them the color will change and lastly let's arrange the sleeve. I will start with the cuff part and after the cuff has been placed I will place the sleeve on the arrangement point uh, around the elbow that's facing upwards. Now we finish placing all pattern pieces of the half garment. Let's hide the arrangement points again after we finished arranging and then we can move over to the sewing. As there are no additional segment points on the lines, I will start with the segment sewing tool. Once you select it, you can start by connecting the side seams together. As a next step I will go on with the shoulder seams simply by clicking on both lines. Just always make sure that the notches are placed in the same direction. Now when I want to connect the sleeve I can see that for the front part of the sleeve it is one segment that I can connect to the front but for the back part, I have one segment point here at the top that splits this line into two. So it is of course possible to switch to the M2N function, but you can also use a 
shortcut click on the long segment that will be the armhole on the back piece press shift the light will the sewing line will turn into a light green then move downwards to your sleeve and co collect both of the segments after you've done this release shift and you have sewn these two small segments to the one long segment of the sleeve uh, then you can continue connecting the segments for the hem part also here on the cuff we can use a similar method again so we start by selecting the segment on the cuff then you press shift and collect both segments as a next step we will go to the collar part where we see that the collar that is attached to the center back can be done with the segment sewing but here in the front we face a situation where there's multiple points and we will switch to the free sewing tool with the free sewing tool I can now move to the collar and I start where I ended the sewing line for the back part and go all the way to the tip and if I now go to the front neckline I will see that I get this blue point that indicates where the seam lines are of exact same length and by clicking I place my seam line now I will save the pockets uh, to put them on later so the sewing of this half is completed for now now let's move to some more work on the patterns you can see at the hem part and also the cuff we will later on want to fold the pattern piece upwards so in order to be able to fold it on this location we need to transform the baseline into an internal line and this can be done with the help of the trace tool so the trace tool you can find it in your 2d window with shift press down select both baselines and then press enter on your keyboard to transform them from baseline to internal line now once they are in an internal line they get this brown red shadow now we will switch to the 3d window and choose the fold arrangement tool which allows you to fold pattern pieces upwards click on the internal line you get this gizmo and with draw the arrows upwards so that the bottom part is folded inwards now when it comes to the sleeve and the cuff you will see that the sleeve covers the cuff or at least the internal line so we will move it out a bit first uh, with the select move tool you click on the cuff part and then in the property editor we can arrange it or we can move it around the Y position just drag it out a bit so we can see the internal line and then switch back to the fold arrangement tool if you once again click and select the internal line rotate your view that you see almost a full circle and draw it inwards here it's very important to be aware that the gray sides of the fabric should not come through so that would cause uh, issues make sure that you do not do not see the gray sides through your cuff and then we will see that the collar part does not have the fold line drawn onto the pattern piece so we need to draw it ourselves uh, in order to do so we can choose the internal polygon line tool and 
then start at the tip by simply clicking on the pattern piece to start the line hold down shift which shows you the helper lines and double click at the end in the center back to conclude the line now you will also see the line in 3d as a next step we will choose the fold arrangement tool once again click on the line and fold the error down inwards so now as we have prepared and folded the pattern pieces we now can deal with sewing the remaining uh, hem parts and cuff parts up so to start with the hem I select the segment sewing tool and now we will have to zoom in a bit closer because we want to decide how the sewing line should be placed. When you click on a pattern piece you get this blue dot that indicates where on the pattern piece you click and as they are folded up you will notice that the notches of your sewing line will be facing each other this time. So you just have to remember that it's turned this time. You can also visualize this with your sewing tool. And then you also see that the lines are directly visualized in 3D. And if this is a bit too complicated, then you can simply click on your lines in 3D and connect them directly in 3D. And if you have a visualization like this, you will see the sewing lines do not overlap and are correct. Now I also would like to attach the bottom of the hem part to the top of the hem. The top line is divided by a segment point so I start at the bottom, I press down shift and I collect the two segments on top, I click again and my sewing relationship has been established. Now when we have sewn together a folded piece like this hem rib we must pay special attention to the sewing line type and I will switch to my edit sewing tool shortcut B to select both of the sewing lines that I have just placed and now when you go to the property editor you will see the line that says sewing line type In the image that's appearing in the screen, you can see the difference between the turned option and the custom angle. So for example, on a side seam, you have a custom angle because the back part will go to the back and the front to the front and the angle between the sewing lines is 180 degrees. Whereas for the turned pattern piece, you want the sides to stick to each other and be close to each other. So in this case, on the end of the hem part and also on the top and bottom of this hem part, we would like to switch the sewing line type to turned. And then we just need to repeat this process on the cuff of the sleeve. So once again, I change to the segment sewing tool, place the seams on both edges and one from top to bottom. Now one seam that we uh, are not allowed to forget is that we can have to connect the sides of your cuff and after you have placed our seam lines make sure to switch to the edit sewing tool and change the sewing line type to turn. Now we've completed the sewing for this half of the pattern it is time to duplicate it. For this, select the Transform Pattern Tool A and select the pattern piece that you would like to duplicate. Uh, we leave the pockets out for the moment because we haven't worked on them yet. After this, right click on one of the pattern pieces and you find the command Clone Pattern with Linked Editing, Symmetric Pattern and Sewing, Shortcut Control D. Then you get this yellow ghost as a preview if you press shift you once again get the guidelines 
and they will help you to align it horizontally. Um, place it in close proximity to the center front of the avatar and press 2 on your keyboard to get a full picture from the front of your avatar. As next step, click on one of the selected pattern pieces and the gizmo will appear and now you can so to say fine-tune the positioning and the key criteria here would be the cuff so that the cuff nicely aligns around the sleeve. Just rotate around your avatar to check if everything is placed correctly and not too many patterns are overlapping. Then I will just quickly rearrange the pattern pieces in 2D and match up the back panels or the back pieces and also the colors uh, on the top. Once they are aligned nicely, I will switch to the segment sewing tool. And connect all the seams down the center back, as well as also the hem parts. And now you can see all of that is closed. Let's now add some patterns to the center front before we start the simulations. As it is a female jacket pattern, we have to pay attention to which side should be on top. In this case, it will be the side that I now mark will be on the outside. And this will be where I place the buttonholes. The other front part will be where I have the buttons. I press 2 on the keyboard and now with the help of the gizmo I simply move it out slightly on the blue axis to make sure the lay layers don't intersect and the correct piece is further out. Then I will now select the button tool from the 3D toolbar and with this tool I can place my buttons. Uh, I place the first button by zooming in in the 2D window on the marking where the button is and simply by clicking on the position I can create my first button. Now I see that I have still four more buttons to create and I will use a method where I can copy paste multiple at once. So I will switch the tool to the select move button tool, select the button and then right click to copy it can also be done with a shortcut, Control c As a next step, I will right-click again and uh, paste or Control v Then I will move into the position of the second button. I will zoom in closely uh, to like hit it precisely and then I right-click. Once I right-click, a dialog window will open and it will give me the interval it precisely with the distance from the first button to where I clicked for the second button. Now as I mentioned before when I go in the 3D window I can see that I still need four more buttons additional to the one that I already placed on top. So I can simply type in number of buttons and buttonholes four and confirm with enter. And you will see that now all buttons have been created in the uh, same distance from each other. After having placed all the buttons, we now would like to place the buttonholes. But in this case, we can use an easier method and don't have to place them one by one. So with the Select Move button tool, select all buttons in your 2D window by simply drawing open a box then right click on one of the buttons to access the right click menu and in the middle of the right click menu you will find a command that says duplicate as buttonhole to symmetric pattern. When you click on this command it will automatically mirror your buttons as buttonholes to the symmetric pattern. And of course, this only works if you have symmetric patterns. 
Now, once you have button and button hole, as a next step, let's fasten the buttons. And for this, you will need to choose the fasten button tool. You can simply click on a button and drag an arrow to a button hole. And it will move, the button will come out in the 3D window and has this lock icon. Now for the remaining buttons, you can also fasten multiple at once, simply drag a box over all the buttons and direct the arrow to the buttonhole. Let's switch back to our Select Move tool and press the Simulation icon to start the simulation and simulate our garment. Now, as next step, we can see our simulated garment and all pattern pieces that are connected. But we can also see that here there is still a issue with the button, as it has also collision. Uh, in order to fix it, you can click on the button with a right click and choose the command Reset 3D Position. Then it will reposition itself on top of the fabric. If you start the simulation, now again you will see that the button has exactly decided to go on the other side of the pattern piece so here I would recommend to simply repeat this action once the plackets are nicely aligned on top of each other now you see it's not coming out nicely move it a bit further away and re-simulate now when I hide the avatar then I will also see that there is one part that um, is not um, sewn yet and it's so to say the inside of the collar it is still floating and not attached to the neckline let me now stop the simulation and close the remaining parts of the collar as it also has segment points, I will choose the free sewing tool for this sewing action. Once I choose it, I will select the sewing line on the bottom first, go from the center back to the tip, and do the same for the top from the center back all the way to the tip. As those parts should also be placed close together, uh, I will have to change the sewing line type to turned. Then I start the simulation again and you can see that the patterns now lay more flat. Now we're going to look at how to create the puffer jacket effect. If you remember in the beginning, the collar, it was only one part and I split it in parts. So now I would like to bring the two pieces back together again because they fulfill the purpose. We had the symmetry for the sewing where this made things easier for us but in the final piece I would like them to be um, one pattern piece. For that I'm gonna use the edit pattern function shortcut set and then Right click on the center back of one of the sides and choose the merge command in the right click menu. So they become one pattern piece again and the seam line also in the 3D window disappears. I re-simulate to allow the piece to reposition uh, and in case here in the front I just need to pull a bit to have it flat. In order to create the padding effect, similar to the real life, you would also need two layers of fabric that you attach to each other and then they will have the filling in between. And I will first create an example uh, to show you how the filling effect uh, can be applied in Clo. For this, I will switch to the Polygon tool, keep my left mouse click down, and I will switch to the Rectangle tool in order to create a square pattern piece in my scene. So 
So I simply draw open a square and the pattern piece is created. Now I have one layer. As a next step, I would like to duplicate this layer with a right click and the layer clone function. In our case, choose layer clone over on top of this uh, created square. You get the yellow preview and you can simply click to place the square in your scene. Now, when you move over to your 3D window, you will see that the square actually exists of two layers. So the two layers are directly sewn to each other and they appear that they're nicely lined up in your 3D viewport. And when you select the edit sewing tool, you once again can see that the seam line is automatically placed around the pattern outlines of your square when you use the layer clone function. So it's a very convenient way to create these doubled pieces. Before we actually apply the pressure to our squares, let's fix them in the 3D space with the help of the pin box tool. Zoom in closely and double click on a pattern outline that will create a nice line of pins that will hold both of your pattern pieces in place. If you rotate around, you will see they are doubled and with the textured surface, you still can see the white and the gray sides. So as a next step, we go to the property editor and you see a line that says pressure. The default value is set to zero. For the lower part, set the pressure value now to minus five. When I click on the other pattern piece, I see it's highlighted in yellow and we set the value to five. So it is just important to remember that the negative value will move the piece, or we'll give it to say volume in the direction of the left side of the fabric, in our case, the gray and vice versa. So this pattern piece, we will expect it to move to the right, the top, and the bottom pattern piece, we will expect it to move more towards the left. When you apply the pressure to your pattern pieces, just make sure that the value that you apply to one side is the same value that you apply to the other side. It doesn't have to be five, but just they have to match with the one difference that one should be positive and one should be negative. So once you have applied the values to your pattern pieces, we can now start the simulation and see the changes applied. You see that the pattern pieces puff up and create this filling effect or this air bubbles inside your pattern pieces and this will allow us to create this padded filling effect and you can see they are connected nicely on the outsides now as a next step i would like to look into quilting effect so in order to do so i will select the back part of the two pattern pieces and delete it from the scene. Once it is gone, I will still have to set the pressure value back to zero to the default value and start the simulation to go back to its original shape. Now, in order to simulate a quilting effect, we will now have to add lines to this pattern piece and we want to draw a circle on the pattern piece with the help of the ellipse tool. So click on the internal polygon line tool, hold it, press down and access the drop down menu and select the internal ellipse tool. 
once selected you can go over to your pattern pieces and simply draw open an internal ellipse switch back to the transform pattern tool and this time we would like to create a layer clone under so the piece we create will be placed behind the pattern piece that we all have already so by choosing either over or under you decide where the piece that you create will be placed and once you have created your piece we will still need to delete one of the pin lines as we only have a need for one quickly simulate to make the pieces come nicely together and we still need to apply the pressure effect one more time so this is the front part this will have a positive pressure value so I go to plus 5 and the back part will have a negative pressure value of minus 5 and now I start the simulation and you can see that it will sort of say puff up and have this quilted effect for the circle so it looks like they are exactly attached on the circle and all the way around where there is more space they will move away from each other and create the filling effect and when you switch to the edit sewing tool you will notice that the layer clone function not only sews the pattern outlines together but it also connects the internal shapes directly so that's of course always something to keep in mind when we now create the padded effect for our jacket let me now delete the square pattern pieces that I used for demonstration and let's now focus on the actual jacket you have just seen that the seam lines with the layer clone function were created for internal lines and pattern outlines currently we still have base lines on our pattern pieces so we will need to transform these base lines into internal lines and we can do this with the help of the trace tool so by pressing down shift we now select all the base lines that we want to transform to internal lines and that will later on be sewn to the layer clone in order to create this quilting effect so let me just select the sleeve parts as well and once I have selected all of them I can now press enter on the keyboard and they will be created not only for the one half that I have selected but for both pattern pieces just be mindful about the center front and the plaquette if you would use the layer clone over function it can be that the created layer would interfere with the other layer and the buttons as they are already tightly on top of each other so here the recommendation is to use the layer clone under function for only this specific pattern piece so I switch to the transform pattern tool select all pieces that I would like to uh, layer clone over and I leave this one out for now right click on one of the pattern pieces and choose the layer clone over command then the yellow preview appears again and I can simply place the pattern pieces above the other pattern pieces in 2D now I select this pattern piece and select layer clone under and place this pattern piece under uh, let me just start the simulation so that the buttons have the chance to rearrange themselves and the layers are attached when you now switch to the edit sewing tool you will see that 
all the internal lines have been sewn to the internal lines of the clones as well as the pattern outlines. As a next step, we now want to apply the pressure. And depending on the, if we used layer clone over or under, we have to pay attention to select the correct pieces. I will start by selecting the pieces that should all get the positive pressure value that are on top. Simply click on your 3D garment, then you will know which one is outside. And remember to add the front left to your selection. Afterwards, go to the property editor, locate the line where you can insert the pressure. And this time I will go for 10 to give the jacket a bit more volume. Then I confirm with enter. And now I simply have to select all the pattern pieces that are laying on the inside. And assign a negative pressure value of minus 10 to those pattern pieces. Then I will start the simulation and I directly can see the effect visualized by the chambers puffing up. Now uh, I will turn off the simulation to examine the result a bit more closely. I will also hide my internal lines and my baselines to see the jacket visualized without them. And now I just rotate around to see the result. Then now as a next step, we would like to add the pocket to the pattern pieces. So that is the pattern piece that's on top and the same is true for this one up here. And we will start with the pocket on the left front piece. You can see that we have a pocket flap that should be attached on top. And we have like pocket markings on our front piece where we first need to convert the baselines into internal lines because we want to sew the pocket onto the front. So with shift press down, I once again select all the lines. It will stay open on top and then press enter. Once they have been converted, the next step now would be to use the sewing tool to connect the pocket to the front. I will use the free sewing tool and always go from corner to corner to make sure they match up precisely. And then I would like to position it in 3D. You remember I have deactivated my pocket. So first I will need to right click and activate the pattern piece. And now with a gizmo, I could just freely move it in the 3D space closer and bring it closer to the jacket. But the shortest way is to use the superimpose over function that you can use when a sewing piece has already been sewn. And you see it positions the pocket directly in the location where it's attached. As a next step, we want to look into the pocket flap, which is still deactivated. Before we can attach the pocket flap, we still need to create the padded effect for the pocket back. Uh, and in order to do so, we want to first of all duplicate it to the other side. So we clone the pattern with linked editing uh, and sewing. Quickly start the simulation. You can also start the simulation by pressing the space bar uh, and also stop the simulation again by pressing the space bar. Now, in order to make it possible to attach uh, the layer clone and have the quilting simulated, we need to transform the baselines into internal lines with the trace tool and shift selected, mark all of them and hit enter. As a next step, 
select both of them, right click and choose the layer clone over command. And once you have chosen the layer clone over command, quickly simulate before we will apply the pressure to the pattern pieces. So the le select both pattern pieces on top, go to the pressure line in your property editor and type in 10 and do the same for the pattern pieces closer to the body just with minus 10. Now once you start the simulation you will see the puffiness applied to your pattern pieces and now you would like to attach the pocket flap onto your pattern so there are no segment points uh, on this line so you can use the segment sewing tool and simply connect the three lines from the pocket flap to the pocket bag. Remember that the pocket flap should lay flat on top of the pocket bag. Therefore, we want to change the sewing line type to turned. Now, switch to your transform pattern tool and you will see the flap is still deactivated so we have to activate it and now move it closer to your jacket once it's close start the simulation to make it possible that it nicely falls into place and create uh, the layer clone with linked editing for your pocket flap, reposition it quickly. Uh, here's just one thing to notice that you ne need to re-sew it again because the layer clone that we have created is not a symmetric pattern piece. So it doesn't have the symmetry, therefore the pocket flap needs to be attached again. So three more seam lines similar to the ones we did before. Also here remember to switch the sewing line type to turned and quickly simulate to have both your pockets with pocket flaps in place. When you now look at the pocket and pocket flaps you see the positions marked for the buttons so we will have to add a button and a buttonhole on pocket bag and flap. So first the button simply choose the button tool and place the button on both pocket bags. As a next step choose the buttonhole tool and do the same on the pocket flap. Now you will see that the buttonhole does not align with the direction of the marking. So we have to choose the select move button tool and in the property editor you can adjust the angle of your buttonhole. So by simply rotating the slider, you can match it to the position. Um, now, by right-clicking on the buttonhole, you can choose the command duplicate to symmetric pattern, and it will create the buttonhole on the second flap, and you will not even have to adjust the tilt as it's already uh, been copied. Lastly, use the fasten button tool to lock the button with the buttonhole, start the simulation and you will see that both your pocket are closed. I will switch back to the select move tool and now I would like to add to the completeness of the garment. For this let's change the pose of the avatar. So I will open the library and locate the avatar folder. In the avatar folder you have a folder with poses and you can choose from those. In our case we have a lot of fabric under the armpit. So it is not recommended to have a position where the arms are close to the body, uh, for example the attention pose, but we can use the A for size pose. So you load the pose by double clicking and then confirm with OK and you see that the avatar changes the position. 
you can quickly simulate just to let the mesh redrape. And um, yeah, as a next step, we now would like to also add fabric to this garment. So we have a fabric library in Clo. It's also located in the library. Find the fabric tab, and then you can choose from the up to 70 different fabrics that come with Clo by default. They are in, from all different categories. And if you have a certain type you would like to use, you can make use of the search bar and type in, for example, nylon. Once you type it in and press enter, the different nylon options will be displayed. And now you can choose by the preview icon and the details which design or which fabric will fit your design. If you want to apply a fabric to a pattern piece, you can simply drag and drop this fabric onto a pattern piece. But it will only change the fabric for one pattern piece. If you want to go one step back, press Ctrl and Set to reverse this step. And what you can do instead is drag it onto the object browser onto Fabric 1. Then all of the pattern pieces will change. Press the simulation button to start the simulation and simulate your garment in these physical properties. You can of course simulate your garment in different fabrics. Always apply the fabric and then start the simulation to see the changes in drape activated. And you see depending on the fabric pro physical properties the, the drape will change accordingly. Now I will go with the nylon canvas as an option. And now we can see that we still need a different fabric for the rib parts. So I will type in my search bar rib, press enter, and then I have the options available shown. Now I can choose from them and I will select all pattern pieces that should have a rib by pressing down shift. Then as a next step, I will hit the assign button at the top right and the new fabric will be assigned to these pattern pieces. Now as a next step you have to make a choice which rib you want to assign and simply drag and drop it into the object browser. Directly afterwards, the changes will be shown in 3D. And if you simulate now, the outline of the rib will be simulated a little bit softer. Now, as a first step, what we want to do is to find a more matching button type for this jacket. So if you go up, to the object browser and choose the button tab. You have the default button selected that we have applied for the moment. And then in the property editor, uh, you can select the shape drop-down menu and thereby change the visual appearance of your button. You can choose from different presets. If you're not satisfied with the one you chose first, just open the menu again and change to uh, another option. If you also want to apply some metalness effect, go to material and under type, you can switch to a metal surface that will have more uh, reflection. And if you go to the center front now, you can also see that the size indicated on the pattern piece is still bigger than the button we have applied currently. So let's change the size to half an inch. And now the button at least is uh, correct in its size. What we need to do as a next step, we now need to change the button hole. So a similar procedure, go to the object browser, go to the button hole tab and 
select your default buttonhole, change the width to half an inch, and as a next step you can also change the shape of your buttonhole. So select the shape tab, choose one of the shirt buttonholes that are more fitting for a garment like this. As a next step I will now uh, make the 3D window a bit bigger and I would like to change my garment to high res garment. So I will have uh, some properties to select. So the particle distance will be lowered to 5 for all pattern pieces. The additional thickness collision will be lowered to 1. The skin offset with the of the avatar will be set to 0 and the simulation quality will be fitting accurate. I press OK and you see on the top left that I now have this overlaying arrows as a symbol and that my garment has like some uh, some more wrinkles. I now need to start the simulation to apply the changes that we made to the simulation properties. And uh, we do have a lot of internal lines, so the simulation is a bit slower. And you see that the garment adjusts in steps. So I stop the simulation again and now I can observe that some of the buttons have moved to the inside. So I can select the Select Move Button tool and then in the 2D window select the buttons that I, uh, yeah, that I cannot see anymore and with the help of the gizmo pull them out so that they are once again nicely placed on top of the garment. Uh, quickly re-simulate to make sure the buttons are in place. And we can see that there's no more collision with the buttons. Now another situation that I want to improve is for the folded parts. For example on the hemline you can see that the curve is still very sharp. And this is because we have set the fold angle for this line to close to zero. The same is true for the collar, where we also still have these very sharp edges. And now we can select these lines in the 2D window. And in the property editor, we see the line for the fold angle and now we can adjust this value and make sure that it's not as sharp. So you can have a value that's maybe closer to 180 degrees to make it puff up like quite a lot or you can go with 120. So that's always depending on the sharpness or softness that you want to achieve at this line where it's folded. Another option that you can check is the fold rendering. So you have a box that decides if the edge is sharp or more rounded. If you uncheck the box you will see that the edge of the line will be a bit smoother and in combination with the fold angle of around 180 it will create a smoother fold for your rib parts. And then I stop the simulation again and rotate around my jacket to see how the fold improved. In order to add to the realism once more, when you check your lines you normally would have some small wrinkles along your quilting lines and there is a way how to express this in CLO. Uh, in order to do so we will need to select the internal lines 
and to do so one by one is quite cumbersome. So there is a shorter way when you simply right click in the empty space in the 2D window you can select lock all pattern outlines as a command so when you now as a next step draw open a box only the internal lines can be selected with the transform pattern tool so you start to draw open a box for the back piece by pressing shift you add to your selection the front piece and the sleeve as they are symmetric they always take the symmetric part with it remember to uncheck the line for the pocket and select one of the parts for the pocket bag then in your property editor you find the line elastic check the box for elastic and you will have some options available for you when you set the ratio for elastic to 100 it means the line is exactly at the original length but now we want to shrink it to 98 so that it shrinks it a bit together and thereby we can create this um, wrinkly effect start the simulation to apply the change and simply observe how the drape of your garment changes and you can see that the small wrinkles are added to your garment stop the simulation you can also go back and forth if you want to compare the details by pressing ctrl set to go one step back and control Y to undo the changes you made. And then we can add one last layer of um, to these wrinkles. To do so, we will use the puckering function, which makes small wrinkles visual along the internal lines. So expand your 2D window to have full access to the to the toolbar and find the line for segment puckering. Once you found it, click on the icon and choose it. In the object browser, you will get a preview of what puckering you are applying. And if you hover over your internal lines, you get this turquoise preview and by clicking on one of your internal lines you apply puckering to this internal line you will see that in your 3d viewport small shadows are added to your internal line this is only a visual effect created by this normal map so in addition to the elastic function, you can add wrinkles with the puckering function. Now, when you click on your puckering in the object browser, you can choose a normal map that corresponds to your fabric. So we have material nylon. Now we want to have finer wrinkles. And then you have also some options below. You can change the opacity of your wrinkles. If you have a lighter fabric, you can go less uh, lower. If you have a stronger fabric, you can maybe have a bit more of the opacity. You can also change the width. That means how long are the wrinkles in regards to your internal line. They start from the internal line and then how far they should go out. And once you have applied this, you have used elastic function and the puckering this is the last step for this video thank you very much for watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel